So in this short, quick and rapid review series, uh, this is amino acid part 2. For part 1, you can take a look in the description below. So in my previous uh, video, I have classified amino acids based on the side chain characteristics. Now let me classify amino acids based on the nutritional requirement and also metabolic fate of amino acids. So based on the nutritional requirements, amino acids can be classified as essential amino acids, semi-essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. So the essential amino acids are the ones that are absolutely necessary to be taken in the diet because we cannot synthesize them in our body. So what are the absolutely essential amino acids? It can be remembered as TV till PM. So TV till PM it is tryptophan, valine, threonine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, phenylalanine and methionine. There are two amino acids which are referred as semi-essential amino acid in that uh, most important one is arginine which is necessary under positive nitrogen balance condition. Example of positive nitrogen balance condition like childhood where growth and development going on or pregnancy where uh, fetus is growing inside bodybuilding process or rec recovery from illness wherever uh, more protein intake is necessary at that time uh, because more protein synthesis is going on so there is a necessity of arginine to be supplemented along with arginine uh, histidine can al is also referred as a semi essential amino acid and so other two amino acids like tyrosine and cysteine some books mentions that also as uh, semi essential amino acid so you can go in that order arginine, histidine, tyrosine and uh, cysteine. Now coming classification of amino acids based on the metabolic fate. So based on the metabolic fate of amino acids, especially catabolism, they can be classified as glucogenic amino acids, ketogenic amino acids and uh, both glucogenic and ketogenic amino acids. So first you remember ketogenic amino acid. Ketogenic amino acids are two of them and that is leucine and lysine. Remember the, uh, the, them as Lucy lice, that's a mnemonic. And then uh, both glucogenic and ketogenic category, we have uh, three aromatic amino acids that is tyrosine, tryptophan, phenylalanine and then add isoleucine and threonine. So rest all of them are uh, glucogenic amino acid, you can remember that way. And also when amino acids become part of a polypeptide chain, when they are exposed to UV light, so the absorption of ultraviolet light by uh, amino acids, it will be done between 250 to 290 nanometer and uh, maximum absorption capacity is done by aromatic amino acids that is uh, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan especially at 280 nanometer which is uh, predominantly by tryptophan remember that and also note that amino acids can undergo modification so they can undergo post translational modification into like hydroxylation process glycosylation process just to give an example uh, proline can undergo hydroxylation to become hydroxyproline Lysine can be hydroxylated into hydroxylase, we find them in collagen molecules. So that kind of deri derived amino acids can be seen in a protein molecule. And also amino acids uh, can undergo decarboxylation process, they can undergo deamination process. Best example for that is glutamate, you know, glutamate uh, can undergo deamination into its corresponding alpha keto acid that is the alpha keto glutarate or glutamate can undergo decarboxylation done by glutamate decarboxylase into gamma amino butyrate. So like this decarboxylation will of an amino acid will produce a corresponding amine deamination of an amino acid will become a corresponding a keto acid. Example further examples so where we are uh, Tyrosine can undergo decarboxylation to become tyramine, tryptophan and can undergo decarboxylation to become tryptamine, histidine can undergo decarboxylation to become histamine. Decarboxylation of amino acids uh, make a neurotransmitter or inflammatory molecules or something like that. Because uh, glutamate undergo decarboxylation becoming GABA, gamma amino butyric acid which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Glutamate and aspartate themselves are exertator neurotransmitter. Glycine is a major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord. And arginine can make uh, neuro can give neurotransmitter like neuro nitric ox. Tyrosine neuro uh, derived neurotransmitters are dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine. So like this, the other aspects of amino acid you should remember. So some of the quick recaps here, uh, three hydroxyl containing amino acid, we have serine, tri uh, threonine and tyrosine and out of three aromatic amino acid, tyrosine is the only hydroxyl containing amino acid, remember. And then we have uh, th two sulfur containing amino acid, cysteine and uh, methionine. In that cysteine has got thiol group, uh, that is SH group, which is free, whereas uh, methionine has got thioester group, uh, where sulfur is not free, remember that. And then uh, some of the special groups that are present in amino acid, let me quickly recap that. Uh, arginine has got guanidinium group and also note that arginine is the 
amino acid that contains most abundant or higher number of amino group. In fact, it has three amino group in the side chain itself and then the primary amino group. And then histidine has got imidazole group, um, phenylalanine has got benzene ring, uh, tyrosine has got phenol uh, group and tryptophan which has got indole group and then proline has pyrrolidine group. And there are two amino acids uh, which are referred as 21st and 22nd amino acids. So, the 21st amino acid is selenocysteine. So, there are certain selenoproteins that we have, so which contain selenocysteine as the amino acid. So, what is the speciality about selenocysteine? Selenocysteine is actually coded by uh, translational recoding of UGA codon. So, UGA is actually a stop codon, but trans there will be translational recoding uh, by a sec IS sequence that is a selenocysteine insertion sequence. So, that process is called as translational recoding, remember. So, there are certain proteins that contain selenocysteine in our body and example, we have glutathione peroxidase, thioredoxin redox, selenoprotein P, iodothyronine deiodinase enzyme. So, these are all selenocysteine protein, uh, containing uh, proteins. And then we have pyrolysin, which is referred as 22nd amino acid. So, pyrolysin is, is uh, coded by translational recoding of UAG codon and note that pyrolysin is not seen in uh, eukaryotes, but it is seen in prokaryotes. Alright, so that's about uh, amino acids. Uh, I'm going to come with uh, protein review in my next video.